Come on, somebody. If you believe God that he could do absolutely anything, hallelujah. I wonder if we could give him glory right now. In the name of Jesus, God, Lord, I still believe, God. I still believe, God, Lord, salvation, God, over my family, God. I still believe, God, Lord, you could do the impossible, God, which seems, God, mystery, God. God, I know I serve a God, Lord, that could do absolutely anything, God. I still believe, God, that you are powerful, God. I still believe that you are my provider, God. I still believe, God, Lord, that you are my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God is here in a very special way. I just feel to remind somebody that God knows exactly where you are at. Exactly where you are at. He loves you. This is your moment, your opportunity, your visitation, your confirmation that God is in the middle of wherever you are at. God has not forgotten, but God sees and knows and has purpose. And even in the midst of mystery, we can still have peace. Even in the midst of unanswered questions, we can still have peace because we are covered under his name. We are covered under his blood. God is awesome. God is awesome. Thank you, God, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, God, Lord, for your presence, God. A reminder, God, that we are not alone. A reminder, God, that we can. We can, God, get through. We can overcome. We can conquer, God, not by my might, but it is under your name, under your covering, under your cross, God, Lord, that you bear your price, God, that you paid. God, I know, God, under that umbrella of a protection, under that umbrella, God, of covering, God, Lord, God, I know, God, Lord, that I will not be destroyed, God, but I know, God, that I will come out, God. God, I know what I would overcome, God. I know the other side of this, God. I may not see it now, but by faith, God, Lord, I know, God, Lord, God, that pure joy, pure peace, God, miracles, God will happen in my life doors will begin to open God I will see the glory of the Lord because I know God it wasn't in my doing but it could only be I could only be in a position God that only you can open that door only you God could guide and direct and open my eyes to another way and that is through you hallelujah for that I give you glory, I give you honor, God, ahead of time, even before I live it. But God, by faith, I walk in it, God. I embrace it, God, Lord. I see that door open, God. And God, Lord, I take that first step of faith, God. I take that first step of belief, God, Lord, God, that I will walk in you, walk under your covering, God. No matter what lie, no matter what doubt may say, no matter what my only unbelief may tell me, God but God I know God by faith God by faith you will provide by faith you will show up God no matter what the doctor may say I know that you will show up God I know God because you've done it in times past God you've done it generations before me God you've done it with people that surround me God that you brought healing God that you brought direction God that they were able God Lord to overcome God I will survive God I will overcome in your name, Jesus, Jesus. Everybody close your eyes. Just whisper, Jesus, Jesus. Whatever I need, it is in Jesus. Whatever I question, it is in that answer is in Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to give him praise one more time. Lord God. Come on, somebody. Hey, God, I worship you, God. Ahead of time, God, I give you glory. I give you honor right now in Jesus' name. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. If you have your Bibles, Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6, verse 5. It reads like this. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are, ensla are enslaving, and I have remembered my cover. So God remembers me. So God remembers me. Therefore, 
Say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with a mighty acts, acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people. I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifting hand with an uplifting hand to give to Abraham, I, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. I wonder if we could just put our Bibles down. Close your eyes for the next few minutes. I just want to speak on the subject, trapped. Lord Jesus, you are here in a very special way. We recognize you, God. We thank you, God, for what you are about to do, God. I just pray, Lord, that your anointed word will go forth, God, to touch hearts and minds. God, open us, God. God, Lord, to receive your word, God. But God, Lord, you are already here, God. Your anointing, God, your presence, God, is already here, God. I pray, God, Lord, that you would put a, an extra layer, God, Lord, of anointing, an extra layer of clarity, God. God, right now, God, I pray, God, that you will move through every aisle. God, that you will move through every home represented here, God. You will move, God, through every life that is viewing, God, right now. I pray, God, that you will reach, God, Lord, into the hearts and lives and situations, God. God, Lord, right now, God. God, Lord, I believe, God, by faith, God, and you will move in a mighty way. God, I pray your anointing one more time for your servant, God, to speak your word, God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Why don't you just put your hands together for the Lord one more time. Jesus! <laughs> Hallelujah, you can be seated. It's funny how sometimes life, life could be chaotic, especially if you have little ones. Just to get out of the door on time is a mission. You have to plan. You have to write down in your calendar. You have to set alarms just to be on time. It's almost impossible to, to conquer this mission especially if you have little ones. So then we develop these routines that gets us from one moment to the next, from out the door to the doors of school on time, to out the door to the doors of our job, to out the doors sometimes even to the car door on time. One moment to the next. A system that will at times fail, but gets us to that moment of back to home, back to a devotion with our family, eating together at the dinner table. And for me, it's walking through that door and hearing the screams of two little kids, daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home, with just excitement and smiles. That's my payback. That's my payback. So I can imagine the Israelites over time have developed a system, a routine to just survive, a routine to just get through another day in, in a sense institutionalized to the way of life, the way it was in, in Egypt. But I believe there was an elder, an older woman, an older man, someone of past generations that didn't stop believing, that didn't stop praying and crying out for God to bring deliverance. I believe that there was somebody that deep rooted into their heart that they no matter the circumstance no matter the environment that surrounded them no matter how the betrayal of once was favored in, in Pharaoh's eyes, the next Pharaoh that came, they were in slavery. No matter believing that God will come through one day, believing that he will show up, believing that he will bring deliverance, even those 
around them may have given up, given up hope. Stop praying. Stop believing. So I'm here just to remind somebody, never stop praying. Never stop believing. Never stop speaking the name of Jesus Christ over your home, over your children, over your situation. Believing by faith that I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt that God will show up in my life. No matter what surrounds me, no matter what people begin to speak into my life, no matter what even lies I begin to, to, to pay attention to. But I have to know and believe that God will come through into my life I gotta believe and know that God loves me enough he accepted me enough he 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 took me out of bondage he took me out of slavery for a purpose for a reason and I know for the next generation to come he will come through I believe that there are times in our life in our lives when we can feel trapped Captive by our own self-persecution. Whether it be because of guilt, shame, fear, or past mistakes. And to just get through the day and on to the next moment, we have developed an emotional institution within ourselves. Hear that. Many of us are our worst enemy. Many of us is our worst critic. Many of us walk around with guilt and shame and fear, second-guessing yourself, enslaving your own self because of past mistakes. But we have to remember that we are forgiven. That Jesus Christ releases grace and mercy over our life. That we are not perfect, but we are human. And under his covering, I will overcome. Under his covering, I will conquer. Under his covering, I will grow. I will see the glory of the Lord happen in my life and in my family's life and into the next generation. I will not stop believing. I will not stop praying no matter even how I feel inside because it's not about feeling but it's about believing, staying conquered in the word of God, staying true to what you know and knowing that God will come through for you and your life. It's not in my ability but it is under his name and under his name there is power and under that power there is deliverance and in deliverance there is true freedom. In Jesus Christ. God is awesome. God is awesome. Now is not the time to grow accustomed to your environment. And accept that this is the way God has it for you. For your life. But God has more for our lives. God has purpose. God has clarity and direction. There is no confusion. But God has a purpose for our life. I challenge you this morning to look to those in times past who have paved the way and, and have went before us, who suffered, who sacrificed, who fasted and gave when they didn't have it to give, but still believe that God would provide. If you think of of the elders, if you think of those in times past, man, they, they dedicated, they were committed, they, they, they sacrificed. I'm not talking about the type of sacrifice when your microwave goes out, but I'm talking about sleep deprived, but still getting up to pray. I'm talking about, I don't know how God is going to provide, but I'm still going to Get up to talk with God. I don't know how I'm going to get through this situation. I don't know how my family is going to eat. But God will still provide. I don't have much, but I know that God will provide. I know I still will believe. I'm talking about a generation that lacked possessions, but instilled a heritage that is more valuable than money. On to the next generation. 
My mom is not that old. Maybe old to me, but not that old. But I remember as a young boy in our church, our home church, we had those 24-hour prayer chains and fasting chains. I remember as a young boy, my mom just wrapping me up in, in the blankets. We're going to church. It's like midnight. Going to church, and she, I would fall asleep right under the pew with my blanket. <laughs> you know, but she was committed. That's just the way they did things. If we're going to do a prayer chain, we're going to be dedicated. We're, we're gonna, even if I have to get up at midnight, even if I have little ones, I'm going to wrap them up, make sure they're warm, but they can sleep on the pew as I get a hold of God. Because we're going to see revival. Because we're going to see change in my life. Because I'm a part of a generation that... that, that at times lacks prayer, at times lost that passion, at times lost the, the, the love for the word of God because of life as, as sucked our time through technology, through social media. But at times if we have just dedicated ourselves as much as we are on the phone, as much as we put in the word of God, sometimes, oh, come on, somebody, you know I'm telling the truth. You know, I'm telling the truth. Before phones ever came, man, there was a, a praying mama. Before internet ever showed up, there, there was a pastor that, 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 that fasted and, and prayed and seen revival and seen miracles happen. But because of distractions in our life that we have allowed into our life that we don't even have time for. I believe that we miss opportunity. I believe that we miss the reality of how real God is. I, I believe that we miss that, that time with God. Oh, how we miss that time with God. I challenge you. I challenge you. It was a generation that never let up. Always believed that God will come through. Always believing that God can, would come through. I tell the story where my mom didn't have food in the cupboard. She, she wrote a grocery list, prayed and fasted. I just When you didn't know what to do, all you, you just prayed and fast. You didn't have the money? Well, I know I'm just going to pray and fast and God will provide. If I don't have food, well, God, God will have to provide because I'm going to pray and fast. I remember she wrote that list and prayed and fast. And one day we opened the door and there was... Grocery bags full of those groceries on our doorstep. Somehow, some way, I don't know who brought them, but we knew that we were going to have a good meal that, that night. And just that's just the way it was in past generations. Always believing. Always, always believing. No, no. When things happen, it, it, was, it wasn't that big of a deal how we make it now. A lot of times in... Today, we can't handle much. We can't handle a lot of different situations. And, and it's too easy that we give up, too easy that we let go, too easy that we're ready to throw in the towel. But God is just wanting you to, to believe. God is not wanting you to, to fix the, the situation, but God is just wanting you to believe. And God will show up. I've come this morning to declare hope over somebody's life and to give yourself permission, self-permission, that you can walk in the freedom and the purpose that God has for your life and for the next generation to come. Because the only person that can hold us captive is ourself. Chains and walls can't bind us, but a, wonder, a wounded spirit can. A bittered heart can. Fear and anxiety have the ability, if you let it, to keep you at a standstill for years while opportunity continues to pass you by. But because of the cross, now hear me, because of the cross, because a, a price was paid, because we have been covered by his blood and, and we carry his name, we have been granted access to true freedom. We have been granted access to true freedom. 
This morning, I challenge you to birth a new perspective that no matter the cost, no matter the situation, we will always hold on and lean into God. No matter what I go through, I will still hold on and believe that God will come through. No matter what faces me, no matter what stumbling block is in front of me, I will still believe that God will show up in my life. That God will show up in my family. That God will show up. Now is not the time to lose hope, but to believe. To believe. Past generations didn't have much, but they did something right. They always believed. Because they didn't have much. All they had was God. All they had, they didn't have no other choice but to lean into God. Because money wasn't there. Shelter our times wasn't there. But all they had was a church and God. And, and, and what else am I going to do but, but only believe? If I don't have this coming into my life, well, I'm just going to pray and fast and believe that God will come through. And too often we let go and give up. But it's time to, to lean into Lean into God. Lean into his promises. Lean into that system of belief that God will provide. That God will give me the strength to overcome. That God will cover me and my family. And I, and I will survive. I will survive. I know that I may not have the answers, but I refuse to give room to defeat. Doubt and fear have no room in my life. Doubt and fear are the two enemies that will shackle you, that will hold you captive, that will enslave you and, and make you feel hopeless, make you feel there is no way out. But Jesus Christ, through his blood and his name, we are free. No matter the situation. No matter even my own unbelief, I have to believe that God will come through. I have to know that hope is right around the co corner. I have to know my miracle is coming down the road of my life and still believe that God, he will provide, that he will bring healing, that he will, God, bring pro uh, provide for my family, provide shelter, provide whatever the need may be. I know that he can do it. I know that he can do it. As the scripture says in Psalms 30 and 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Meaning that this situation, my environment is only temporary. It may seem difficult. It may, it may be uncomfortable. It may be mysterious at, at times, and a lot of times it is, but joy is coming in the morning. My direction is coming into my life. My miracle is coming down the road of my life. It's not in my ability. It's not in my talent. It's not where I come from, but it is only through the name of Jesus Christ that I speak, God. Hope into my life. Hope into my home. Hope over my children. Faith and favor over my life right now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. It's not time to give in, but it's time to rise and believe. It's not time to give in to lies. It's not time to give in to even our own emotion, but it's time to rise and believe. Believe, believe. We can only imagine how the children of, of the Israelites felt in a foreign land without a way out. For generations, the Israelites have become comfortable as slaves. They had their routine. They, in their minds, said, we could do this. We could live out our lives and still be okay. There's still shelter. There's still, still food for my family. We're going to be okay. So it is when we can give in and become comfortable with the way life is. And never work on the source where God is trying to lead us. We think, well, this is just the way life is. 
hardship after hardship, hurdle after hurdle. We could focus on, this is just my life. Woe is me. But we have to believe deep down, man, there has to be more. There has to be more purpose. There has to be something more why God has brought me out of so much. He didn't just deliver me and bring me out just to let me die in, in this state of mind, in this state where, where I, it seems just one struggle after the, uh, the other. But there is purpose. Maybe as the children of Israel, as God was trying to lead them to a certain point in their life, God is trying to lead us to a certain point where all we can do is trust him. Where all we could do is in God. I speak deliverance over my home. I speak deliverance where I am at. It's just like the, the woman in Samaria. where The only way she could get water was when everybody was, was not in town. When everybody was in their home. She tiptoed. To that well just to get her own water. But God came through at a very point in time so he could speak and, has, and have a visitation with her. To let her know that she, she's loved, forgiven, accepted. And how many of us Need that acceptance. Need that love. That reassurance from God that my past cannot define me. Amen. Giving yourself permission to go forward is a huge thing. Because a lot of us, we look in the mirror and we remember. We remember our actions. We remember how it was. But also we hear those lies. But God is saying, man, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. I have more for you if you just keep going forward. Keep pushing. Keep clawing. Keep believing. Keep fighting. Not in our own ability. But it is in Jesus Christ. Because the worst, the worst feeling that one person could feel is when you feel trapped. When you feel trapped, trapped by situations that surround us, trapped by a bad relationship. I'm like, oh, why did I say yes? <laughs> what was I thinking? Trapped by debt. We've all been there. That invisible weight. That crushes your, at times, chest. It's hard to breathe. Trapped by emotional scars from hurts and wounds that we avoid facing. That we avoid revisiting. That we will not allow to, to heal because we avoid. Trapped by reactive thoughts, thought processes. Called negative thinking. Getting control of that, being trapped in our own mind, our own thinking, having that victim mentality. See, I knew it wouldn't work out. See, I knew. Research, research shows that feeling trapped can create anxiety and depression, which further reinforces the feeling of being trapped. And so the cycle continues. God desires for you to be free this morning from every type of circumstance. Free from depression. Free from hurt and shame. Free from anxiety and fear. And walk beyond the walls that enslave us. The enemy is a liar. The enemy is a liar. God has given you access to freedom, access to peace, access to his blood, access to grace, access to the cross, access 
Come on, somebody, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No more will I listen to the lies of the enemy, but I will overcome. I will live in hope. I will have the courage to rise up and believe again that God will show up and God will come through in my life. In Jesus' name. You have been covered and forgiven. No more will I give in to the lies, the fears, the negative thoughts. No more will I hold myself captive, but I'm rising up and coming out. It is hope. It is hope and courage that ignites the fight to keep pushing. It is hope and courage that ignites the fight to keep pushing, keep believing, keep praying that God will come through no matter what it looks like. No matter how I feel, I'm still going to believe that he will come through. I'm just crazy enough to believe that he loves me enough, that he's forgiven me enough to come through and show up. It may not be where I plan, a part of my routine, but I know one day, one day he will show up. One day that door will open one day a miracle will happen I know that one day God will show up in my life (laughs) deliverance has a name as the song goes and that name is Jesus it's Jesus after the, the, the deliverance of the Israelites God positioned the Israelites in a position where there was one exit and the rest see behind them, they had to make, and with the rest see behind them, they had to make a decision. In all their complaining, they still didn't act though. In all their reactive complaining, at that point, when they seen the chariots coming and no way out, they still listened and obeyed. Either they could fight and die in the wilderness as they proclaimed or have the faith to believe that God will make a way out of an impossible situation. How many of you know the more desperate the situation, the greater the opportunity for a miracle? Who wants to be broke? Who wants to have cancer? Who wants that bad report? But it's an opportunity for God to show up. It's an opportunity for God to get glory. It's an opportunity for God to provide again. It's an opportunity for God to show up in our life. If you need something from God, no matter how impossible it may appear, May appear, but allow God to have that opportunity in your life. Your moment for God to show up and to move in your life. No matter in the impossibility, God will show up. No matter how big the mountain may seem, God will show up. He will show up. He is faithful. Now I'm closing. He is faithful, but too often we try to correct and control a situation in our own humanity. But God is just wanting you to stand still and believe. Stand still and believe. Believe that he will provide. So when tragedy hits your life, it's understandable to question God and wonder why this was allowed in your life. The greater the impossibility, the bigger the miracle. In my life, in my family's life, in one year, my uncle, who was a dad to me, and my cousin, who was like a brother to me, died within a six-month period. Tragedy. I think of my aunt, strong in faith, strong as a person. Back then, they just... Strong women that can handle much. And my aunt was just one of them, just thanking God. In the midst of tragedy, thanking God. 
Though it's easy to question. It's easy to see the negative. But there are times you don't have the answers. You have questions. You can't see the open door, but it's time to have the courage to believe. In the midst of tragedy, in the midst of mystery, in the midst of wondering why, always believe that God will come through. I may not have an answer right now, but I know one day, one day, I will. One day, he will come through. One day, he will bring peace. One day, he will bring understanding. One day, he will bring healing to my life. One day, he will provide where we're not so financially strapped. One day, he would open a door at a job where my kids are going to be okay. One day, one day, there will be such anointing and revival in Temecula where people begin to pass by and feel a pull, a tug, a wondering why, why do I feel drawn to True Vine? One day, believing having the courage, being crazy enough to believe that God could absolutely do it no matter what, no matter what I see, no matter what I feel with my senses, but my faith says he will show up. My faith says to believe. So as we stand, I want to give an altar call. If you need anything from God, now is your moment in time. The bigger the impossibility, the bigger the opportunity for God to show up. This is your moment. This altar right here is your open door. The question is, will you walk through it? This is your Red Sea experience when God split the Red Sea wide open and gave him opportunity. As they walk through it, they begin to praise God. Because they knew there was no way out. There was one way in and one way out. And the way out was already cluttered with chariots. But God made an impossible situation very, very possible. So I ask you, what is your situation? What is it that God needs to come through for you? What is it that you need to let go? What is it that, saying, God, I've been praying for this for years. This altar right here is your Red Sea experience. I challenge you to come. Come expecting. Come believing. Come with courage and saying, God, I laid at your feet one more time. I may have done it time after time, but I'm coming this morning believing, changing my perspective, changing my belief, changing my routine. God, Lord, I will not lose hope, but God, I believe that you will show up like never before. I believe, God, this morning, God, this is my moment, God. This is my answer, God. This is my open door, God, Lord, and I decide to walk through it, God, this morning. In the name of Jesus, right now, come as ministry is, is ready to believe with you, Lord Jesus, God. I pray, God, that clarity will come, deliverance will come. God, I pray right now, God, we release it all to you, God. Have your way. The will of God to be done. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody.